It's so good to be here with all of my brothers and sisters. This is my third trip to Africa. And one of the main reasons I like to come is to visit with the people. It reminds me of how I am part of something so much greater and bigger than myself. We're part of this kingdom of God work. 
ni sehemu katika ufalme kazi ya ufalme wa Mungu that is made up of all tribes nations languages tongues peoples ambayo inachanganya mataifa yote lugha zote na aina zote za watu so my heart is thrilled to be here kwa hiyo moyo wangu una furaha sana kuwa hapa there is a old hymn song old song kuna kulikuwa kuna wimbo wa zamani Come thou fount of every blessing. Nao itwa njo ili weze kufurahia baraka. Do you know this song? No? No, okay. It says, Come thou fount of every blessing. Sema njo ili weze kufurahia hizo baraka. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Na moyo wangu usifu sana. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Moyo wangu uimbe neema yake. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Na hata zile chemchem za rehema zake hazikomi. Call for songs of loudest praise. Wito kwa ajili ya nyimbo za kumsifu. As we come into this blessing that God has given to you hata tunapoendelea kujikabidhi katika hizi baraka ambazo Bwana anatupa and the team comes to lead us in worship na hata timu inavyokuja ikatuongoza katika kumwabudu Bwana as we reach out to the lord hata tunapoendelea kutembea na Bwana he begins to tune our heart anaendelea kuiweka mioyo yetu to sing his grace ili iweze kuona neema yake as he tuned your heart here today so far kama anavyoendelea kuigeuza mioyo yetu to sing his grace ili tuweze kuimba neema yake it says later on in the song sema ebu tuendelee kuimba huo wimbo here i raise my ebenezer na hapa ninapomuinua ebenezer wangu either by thy help i've come ambaye msaada wangu unatoka kwake and i hope by thy good pleasure i hope by thy good pleasure na ninatumaini katika hiyo huo ukuu wake safely to arrive at home nitaweza kufika nyumbani nikiwa salama i love the words of that song napenda maneno yaliyo katika huo wimbo we need to have our hearts tuned to sing God's grace. Tunahitajika kuweza kuacha mioyo yetu iwekwe katika hali ya kuimba hizo nyimbo. When the guitar player is ready to play, he has to tune that instrument. Wakati wale wapiga vyombo wanapopotuni vyombo vile, hebu acha na sisi basi tutuni mioyo yetu. When that instrument is tuned, hata is ready to go. Vyombo vinapokuwa tayari na sisi tuwe tayari kuendelea na kwenda nao. God tunes our hearts we are prepared to receive. Na Mungu anapokuwa ameiandaa mioyo yetu hebu na sisi tuwe tayari kupokea. One of the things that helps us to receive is our Ebenezers. Na jambo moja linaloweza kutusaidia sisi kupokea ni tunapomjua Ebeneza wetu. I hope for each one sitting here today that you have Ebenezers in your life where God has helped you to this point. Na natumaini kwamba kila mmoja wetu aliyekaa hapa tayari uko na una, unamjua Ebenezer wako ambaye naye anakufikisha hapa ulipo ulipo sasa. As I'm sure has already been said. Na nina hakika jinsi ambavyo tayari imesemwa. The Ebenezer is a stone of help. Kwamba Ebenezer ni jiwe la msaada it's a memorial that represents how god has helped us to this point ni jiwe la kumbukumbu linalowakilisha umbali ule ambao mungu ametutoa ama kutufikisha the last time i was here was march of 2017 mara ile ya mwisho niliyokuwa hapa ilikuwa mwezi wa 3 it was a wonderful weekend ilikuwa ni juma la ajabu sana amen brother christmas amen ndugu christmas 
ambassador of protocol balozi wa ittifaki we had a wonderful ordination service that weekend tulikuwa na kuwekwa wakfu kuku sana katika lile juma remember unakumbuka that was the lord huyu alikuwa ni bwana by his grace kwa neema yake he brought us to that point ndiye aliyetufikisha hapo we celebrated that day na tukasherekea hiyo siku the next day bishop matuwa showed us his vision na siku iliyofuata askofu mtua akatuonyesha maono alionayo failed the vision of this building to the church na akaionyesha maono ya hili jengo kwa kanisa and when i saw that vision that picture of the tabernacle mimi nilipoona ile picha nikaangalia pia ile picha ya hema la kukutania my heart was leaping in excitement moyo wangu ulikuwa unalia na kushangazwa Bishop began to raise money that morning in the service. Askofu akaanza kuchangisha fedha siku ile asubuhi katika ile ibada. I sat there next to Mama Mili Nika... as the pledges came in. Nilikuwa nimekaa jirani na Mama Mili wakati watu walipokuwa naahidi. Bishop Matua said how much the architect said the building would cost. Askofu Matua alipoulizwa je itagarimu shilingi ngapi akasema kwa kweli ina gharama kubwa a lot of money fedha nyingi a lot of money fedha nyingi and i watched from america as the money came in and the building started to go up nikawa naangalia tangu kule america pia jinsi ambavyo fedha zinapatikana na jinsi ambavyo jengo linaendelea kujengwa and here we are four years later Look what the Lord has done. Leo tuko hapa baada ya miaka minne tukiangalia kazi ambayo Mungu amefanya. Look what the Lord has done. Kuangalia kile Bwana ambacho amefanya. We are in a partnership with the Holy Spirit. Sisi ni washirika pamoja na Roho Mtakatifu. If God is going to do the supernatural kama Mungu anafanya jambo la kiungu we must do the natural sisi tunaifanya katika asili I say that again if god is going to do the supernatural kama Mungu atafanya jambo la kiungu we must do the natural sisi lazima tuifanye katika kimwili kiasili i know that god did not come down by his holy spirit and put this building up Na, he didn't I know I know that God did not come down with the Holy Spirit. Ninajua Mungu hakuja chini na Roho Mtakatifu. And assemble the building. Na akaanza kulijenga ama kuweka tofali kwa tofali ili jengo. How did this building go up? Je, hili jengo lilijengwaje? Work. Kazi. Work. Kazi. Work. Kazi. Sweat. Kutoka jasho. Sweat. Kutoka Dirt. jasho. Kazi. The body of Christ came together. Mwili wa Kristo ulikuja pamoja. Every member doing his or her part. Kila mshirika akafanya sehemu yake. And here we are. Na sasa tumefika hapa. When I heard about the celebration, I said that I wasn't going to come on this trip. Niliposikia hii sherehe nikasema nilikuwa nisiweze kuja hapa. But about two weeks ago the Lord began to stir me. Lakini majuma mawili yaliyopita nikasikia Bwana anaendelea kuhimiza ndani yangu. So I have to be there with my brothers and sisters. Na nikasema hapana napaswa kuwa hapa na ndugu zangu na dada zangu. I wanted to celebrate this with you. Nataka kusherekea pamoja na wewe. Because my heart is here with you. Kwa sababu moyo wangu uko na ninyi hapa. And I have seen the work that my father has done. Na ninapoangalia pia kazi ambayo baba yangu anafanya. That has sowed into my life. Ambayo nimeiona kwenye maisha yangu. In the bishop's life kupitia maisha ya bisho ya all of your lives na hata wote mnaona that builds up the kingdom of god napoendelea kujenga huu falme wa mungu 
So we're here this weekend to celebrate. Kwa tuko hapa kwenye hii wiki kwa ajili ya kusherekea. What the Lord has done. Kile ambacho Bwana amefanya. And what you have here now even though it is not finished. Na kile tulicho nacho hapa sasa hata kama hakijakamilika is an Ebenezer. Yeye ni Ebenezer. We celebrate right now. Tunasherekea sasa. Hither by thy help we've come. Sisi hapa tayari tumekuja. This building is here because God provided the finances. Jengo hili limefikia hapa kwa sababu Bwana ametufanikisha na fedha. This building is here because God provided the grace. Jengo hili limefika hapa kwa sababu Bwana ametufanikisha sana. Great grace. Ametufanikisha sana sana. In the New Testament church, great grace was upon them all. Katika lile agano la kale ukuu na ukuu ilikuwa ni ukuu zaidi. Ukuu wa neema ya Mungu ulikuepo. Great grace. Neema kuu. I am very thankful to be here. Ninamshukuru Mungu kuwa hapa. Now the theme is Ebenezer. Sasa kiini cha ujumbe wetu ni Ebenezer. I work with a lady at my bank, the company that I work for. Kuna mama anafanya naye kazi katika benki ninayofanyia kazi. She made her first trip to Kenya 2 years ago. Mbaya alifanya alikuja safari yake ya kwanza Kenya miaka miwili iliyopita. She wanted to come on this trip. Alikuwa anataka aje safari hii. And I said to her, what did you like so much about Kenya? She said the people. Akasema nawapenda wa Kenya. The people. Nawapenda hao wa Kenya. When you come you get it. Unapokuja ndipo utawajua. Festo will say to me, are you getting me Rafiki? Festo alikuwa ananiambia kwamba utanikuta Rafiki. Are you getting me Rafiki? Umenipata Rafiki. Yes, I am getting you. I'm getting you. I'm getting you. It is okay. Na mimi nimekupata ni sawa. Tuko sawa. Tuko sawa. So for our story, let's go to David and Goliath. Kwa hiyo kwa hadithi yetu hebu tuendelee. Dawudi, Dawudi and Goliath. The problem with these stories is we know them too well. Shida ya hiyo hadithi ni kwamba tunaijua vizuri mno wote. Especially you pastors. Na hasa ninyi wachungaji. We know these stories too well. Tunaifahamu hii hadithi mno. We have to slow down. Sasa hebu turudi tutembee pole pole. Read the story slowly. Tuisome hiyo hadithi pole pole. Let God show us new things Ebu, in the story. Hebu Bwana atuonyeshe jambo jipya katika hii hadithi. David comes to the battle between the Philistines and Israel. Daudi akaja kwenye hii vita kati ya Waisraeli na Wafilisti. And out comes an enemy. Sasa hapo akatokea adui. Out comes the champion of the Philistines. Akatokea huyu shujaa wa Wafilisti. His name is Goliath. Mbaye jina lake ni Goliati. He defies the living god na akamtukana mungu aliye hai goliath defies the god of israel goliati akatukana mungu wa israeli he defies yahweh alimtukana yahweh he defies i am that i am akamtukana mimi niko ambaye niko we see translated in the in the word the lord tunaiona katika tafsiri kuhusu bwana the translation for Yahweh or Jehovah. Ni tafsiri ya ambayo inamsema Yahweh ama Yehova. Goliath has defied the almighty God. Na hata inazidi kuonyesha kwamba yeye ni Mungu mkuu sana. Inside David's spirit something is stirring. Sasa ndani ya moyo wa Daudi kitu kikaanza kuchemka. He does not want to allow this uncircumcised Philistine Hangeweza kumruhusu huyu Mfilisti asiyetairiwa to speak against Yahweh. 
azungumze kinyume na Yahwe This spirit is all through the world today. Hii roho iko na inatenda kazi ulimwengu mzima leo. This is the spirit of antichrist. Ni roho ya yule mpinga Kristo that has gone forth into the world. Ambayo ina inaenda ulimwengu wote. It's getting stronger. Na inaendelea kupata nguvu. In America it is getting very strong kule Marekani inapata nguvu sana and as the righteous we watch this happening na wenye haki tunapoendelea kutazama hii kitokea and in our spirits they get stirred up sasa huku mioyoni mwetu tunaanza kusikia kuchemka hopefully we become zealous for the living god na nitumaini langu kwamba sasa tusikie ile ile ule wivu kwa ajili ya Bwana but we have to become careful that we don't become like James and John lakini sasa ni vizuri tuwe makini tusije tukawa kama Yakobo na Yohana who wanted to call down fire from heaven on the enemies ambao walikuwa wanataka waite moto ili wateketeze maadui as i have watched the evil unfold in america over the last year ninapilivotazama uovu unavyozidi kushuka kule Amerika mwaka jana I've had to be very careful sasa nikawa bidi ni, 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 nianze kuwa makini not to let this get into my spirit nisije nikaruhusu hiyo ikaingia kwenye moyo wangu the evil around us can get into our spirits uovu unaotuzunguka unaweza ukaingia katika mioyo yetu if it gets into our spirits a root of bitterness can grow na kama ukiingia kwenye mioyo yetu basi utaruhusu uchungu utoke mioyoni mwetu we know that that root of bitterness can defile many. Na tunajua kwamba ilo shina la uchungu laweza kuwa na jinsi wengi. So we see the evil and we want to rise up against it. Kwa hiyo tunapoona uovu huwa tunataka tuinuke kinyume nao. But the battle belongs to the Lord. Lakini lazima tukumbuke kwamba vita ni vya Bwana. The battle belongs to the Lord. Vita ni vya Bwana. He chooses to let us partner with him in the battle. Anachagua tu kututumia sisi tuwe naye vitani. He gives us the privilege. Anatupa upendeleo of being used in the battle. Ili atutumie kwenye vita. Back in Genesis when Adam and Eve fell. Ukirudi katika mwanzo wakati Adam na Eva walipoanguka, God could have just killed Adam and Eve. He could have just killed Adam. Hakuwa Adam na Mungu hakuwa Mungu angeweza kuwaua Adam na na Eva and did sin na amalize mwisho wa dhambi and started over again. Na habari hiyo iishie hapo. But instead na anze upya but instead according to God's plan kini badala yake kutokana na mpango wa Mungu according to his purposes kulingana na kusudi lake he said i am going to put enmity 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 between the serpent and the woman's seed akasema nitaweka uadui kati ya uzao wa mwanamke na nyoka god said i am going to create a battle against sin Mungu anasema nita nitatengeneza vita kati ya dhambi. God started the battle. Mungu akaanza vita. And God said I am going to be in it. Na akasema na mimi nitakuwa ndani yake. God initiated the battle. Mungu akajihusisha na hiyo vita. And he said I am going to be in it. Akasema nitakuepo na mimi pia. And I he says I am going to use people. Akasema nitaenda kuwatumia watu demonstrate my glory ili kudhihirisha utukufu wangu the glory of the church utukufu wa kanisa to principalities and powers kwa nguvu na mamlaka amen amina amen so in our zeal to stand up for god kwa hiyo katika ile shauku yetu ya kusimama kwa ajili ya bwana we have to guard our hearts lazima tuingie kwenye mioyo yetu 
remembering that the battle belongs to the Lord. Na, na kwamba vita vinatoka ni vya Bwana. Do the part that he gives us to do. Na tufanye tu ile sehemu ambayo Mungu anatupa. Now, I'm in 1st Samuel 17. 1st Samuel Sasa chapter tu, 17. Katika ile Samueli wa kwanza sura ya 17. Goliath defies the God of Israel. Goliati akayatukana majeshi ya Mungu wa Israeli. And David's response is this. Na mwitikio wa Daudi ulikuwa huu. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Ni nani huyu Mfilisti asiyetairiwa that comes against the God of Israel? Anayeweza kusimama kinyume na Mungu wa Israeli? Or as it says in Psalms chapter 2, why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. He who sits in the heavens will laugh. When Jesus finishes with the devil, he's going to slay him with one word. Alikuwa tu anaenda kumchinja kwa neno moja. The devil is going to be like a speck on his shoulder. Dust. Shetani angebaki tu kama vumbi ambayo imekaa begani. He's just going to push him off. Ambaye angefuta tu hivi iondoke. It will be done. Na ingefanyika. Battle belongs to the Lord. Vita ni vya Bwana. He is using us. Anatutumia tu in the battle. Katika vita we have the privilege of being used. Sisi tuna fursa ya kutumiwa. We are being watched by the cloud of witnesses. Na tumekuwa tukitazamwa sana na wingu la mashahidi. Someday soon we will be in the cloud of witnesses. Na siku nyingi si nyingi nasi tutakuwa katika lile wingu la mashahidi. Right now it is our turn fight in the battle. Lakini sasa ni zamu yetu sisi kupigana vile vita. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Daudi akauliza, ni nani huyu Mfilisti asiyetairiwa? What he is saying is that this Philistine is outside the covenant. Alichokuwa anazungumza ni kwamba huyu Mfilisti yuko nje ya agano na Mungu. He is not a part of the covenant people. Hayuko kati ya wale wenye agano na Mungu. Therefore he is functioning as the enemy of God. Kwa hiyo utendaji wake ni upande wa adui wa Mungu. Now most of you I believe know the story. Sasa naamini kwamba nyote tunafahamu hiyo hadithi. David says this Philistine should be somebody should fight this Philistine. Sasa Daudi anasema lazima inatakana papatikane mtu apambane na huyu Philistine. Everybody is afraid. Kila mmoja alikuwa anaogopa. Nobody wants to fight the champion. Hakuna mtu yote aligambaye angetaka kupambana na huyu shujaa. David said I'll fight him. Daudi akasema nitapambana naye. Word gets back to the king Saul. Neno yakafika kwa mfalme Sulema Sauli. Saul says you can't fight this man. Sauli akasema huwezi kupambana na huyu mtu. Why? Kwa nini? Saul looked on the outside. Sauli alitazama nje. Even Samuel the prophet looked on the outside. Hata nabii Samuel naye alitazama nje. David was not a physical warrior. Daudi hakuwa na, na umbo ama na, ni mtu ambaye ni shujaa kwa kuonekana. He was small, even scrawny. Um, Alikuwa ni kijana small. mdogo. So says Goliath has been a man of war from his youth. Sauli akasema Goliath amekuwa mtu wa vita tangu akiwa kijana. And this is David's reply. Sasa majibu ya Daudi yalikuwa haya kwa mfalme Sauli. Samuel chapter 17. Katika sura ya 17 ya Samueli wa kwanza. Verse 32. And Daudi said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Daudi akamwambia Sauli, Asizimie mtu yeyote kwa ajili ya huyu, 
Mimi mtumishi wako nitakwenda kupigana na huyu na mfilisti huyu. And Saul said to Daud, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Sauli akamwambia Daudi, huwezi wewe kumwendea mfilisti huyu upigane naye. For thou art but a youth. Maana wewe ukijana tu. And he is a man of war from his youth. Na huyu ni mtu wa vita tangu jana wake. Now those might be the facts. Sasa hiyo inaweza ikawa ni kweli. We often encounter facts. Na tu, tuna, tunapaswa kuthibitisha kweli. The doctor tells you you have cancer. Daktari anaweza akaja akakwambia una kansa. That might be a fact. Na hiyo inaweza ikawa ni kweli. But the truth Laki, is. Lakini ukweli ni. The truth is. Ukweli ni. That God can overcome that with a word. Mungu hawezi kuja pale kwa hilo neno. With a touch. Kwa mguso. In fact, without a touch from God, lakini ule mguso kutoka kwa Mungu, none of us can fight this battle. Hakuna yeyote kati yetu anaweza kupambana vita bila uo mguso wa Mungu. A word from God or a touch from God changes everything. Neno kutoka kwa Bwana ama mguso wa Bwana unaweza kubadilisha kila kitu. So David doesn't care about the facts. Kwa hiyo atuja, atusumbuliwi na zile kweli. He doesn't care about the size of this champion. Hakusumbuliwa na, na, na umbo la huyu shujaa. This is what David says. Kile Daudi alichokisema ni hiki. Verse 34. Katika mstari wa 34. And Daudi said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. Daudi akamwambia Sauli mtumishi wako alikuwa akichunga kondoo za baba yake alipokuwa akija simba au dubu alimkamata mwana kondoo wa lile kundi mimi hutoka nikamfuata nikampiga nikampokonya kinywani mwake na akinurukia kumshika ndevu zake na kumpiga nikamuua Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them Kwa hiyo mtumishi wako alimuua simba na dubu pia na huyu mfilisti asiyetahiriwa atakuwa kama mmoja wao Seeing that he has defiled the armies of the living God kwa sababu amewatukana majeshi ya Mungu aliye hai. Daudi said moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Daudi akasema Bwana aliyeniokoa na makucha ya simba, makucha ya dubu, ataniokoa na mikono ya mfilisti huyu. And Saul said unto Daudi, go the lord be with you Sauli akamwambia Daudi anaenda na Bwana atakuwa pamoja nawe Now what did David just do here Sasa Daudi hapa anafanya nini He raised his Ebenezer Alimuinua Ebenezer wake He raised his Ebenezer Alimuinua Ebenezer Hither by God's help I've come By God's help I've come Kwa msaada wa Bwana nimekuja God already delivered me. Mungu tayari alishanikomboa and he will deliver me. Na atanikomboa. Not because of anything in me. Sio kwa sababu ya kitu chochote ndani yangu. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. Kwa sababu vita ni vya Bwana. The battle belongs to the Lord. Vita ni vya Bwana. Now how many know that David is still going to have to fight? Sasa wangapi wanajua kwamba Daudi pamoja na hayo lakini alipaswa apigane? He's still going to have to fight. Lazima angepaswa aende apigane. For your building to go up. Kwa hiyo hili jengo liendelee kupanda. You still have to work. Lazima tuendelee kufanya kazi. You still have to fight. Lazima tuendelee kupambana. In the story of Nehemiah, they had to fight while they built, rebuilt the wall. Katika ile hadithi ya Nehemia, wale walitakiwa waendelee kupigana huku wakiendelea kujenga ile kazi ya Bwana and they were building the testimony of the lord na walikuwa kiujenga ushuhuda wa bwana the testimony of the lord had been torn down na ukuta wa bwana ama ushuhuda ulikuwa tayari umeangushwa it had been broken down ulikuwa umevunjwa 
There was much destruction in the place of the testimony of the Lord. Kulikuwa na uharibifu mkubwa kwenye huo ukuta ama ushuhuda wa Bwana. They were rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem that had been torn down by Babylon. Sasa walikuwa narudi kujenga ukuta wa Yerusalemu ambao ulikuwa umeangushwa na wababeli. And they had to work and they had to fight. Na walikuwa lazima wafanye kazi na wapigane. With one hand they worked. Mkono mmoja wangefanya kazi. With the other hand they held a weapon. Na mkono wa pili wangeshika silaha. This speaks to our fight. We work we hold a weapon. Hiyo hapo tunafanya kazi na huku tunapigana. In all of this the Lord is with us. Na katika yote hayo Bwana yuko pamoja nasi. As we partner in his work. Jinsi tunavyoendelea kufanya kazi na yeye katika kazi yake. years ago I got very sick. Miaka miwili iliyopita nilikuwa mgonjwa sana. Very very sick. Mgonjwa sana. I never experienced anything like this in my life. Sijawahi kukutana na jambo kama hilo katika maisha yangu yote. I know that some of you were praying for me. Najua baadhi yenu mlikuwa mkiniombea. I thought I might die. Hata niliwaza kwamba ningeweza kufa. I called all of my three children together. Nikaita watoto wangu wote watatu pamoja them that I loved them kawaambia gave them my my fatherly thoughts nikatoa neno langu la wosia and i prayed for the daylight na nikawaombea kwa siku zao za baadaye when paul was on the ship paul on the way to rome in acts kama paulo alipokuwa kwenye ile meli akiendelea akienda roma there was neither sun nor light for weeks walikuwa hawaoni tena tumaini la kuishi It says that they put down four anchors and prayed for the light. Na wakaweza kukaa chini na kuomba kwa ajili ya siku zao zinazokuja. Days go into weeks, go into months. Siku zikaenda majuma, zikaenda miezi. And I'm praying. Kawa naomba. I'm taking communion. Kao na shiriki meza ya Bwana. Brother Festo was in my house praying for me. Hata mimi nikawa nyumbani kwake nikamuombea. Many people were praying for me. Watu wengi walikuwa wananiombea. And it seems like God is not doing anything. Na ikaonekana ni kama mwili wangu hakuna chochote kinachofanyika. We don't understand. Sikuelewa. And I had to hang on in the middle of the battle. Nikaendelea katika hiyo hali ya hiyo vita whatever the lord would bring me for that day in that moment na tukawa tunaendelea mpaka siku ya huo ama huo wakati when jesus said give us this day our daily bread ambapo kati yesu aliposema natupe leo mkate wetu haba riziki ya leo when we pray for that tunapoomba ilo ombi I believe that what Jesus is saying to us there is Naamini maneno ambayo Yesu anatuambia pale ni haya Give us everything we need to do your will and purpose this day O Lord Kwamba Mungu tupe kila tunachokihitaji kila leo ili kufanya kazi yako inavyotustahili kila siku Give us what we need financially Tupe kile tunachohitaji kifedha. Give us what we need physically. Tupe kile tunachohitaji kimwili. Give us what we need to eat and sustain ourselves. Tupe kile tunachohitaji kula na hata kutuimarisha. Everything that we need to be able to live and function in God's call for our lives. Kila kitu tunachokihitaji ili tuweze kuishi na kuweza kuifanya kazi ya Mungu. I would leave work and go outside and walk often i would go outside of my office and walk niweza kutoka ofisini kwangu na kuanza kutembea and i would put on praise music when i would walk na wakati huo nikiwa nacheza mziki nikisikiliza nikiwa natembea and one of the songs one of the songs that i like to listen to na moja wapo ya nyimbo ambazo nilikuwa napenda kusikiliza za sifa called God of miracles. Inaitwa Mungu wa miujiza. And in this song he says 
Huo wimbo unasema Let faith arise. Hebu imani iinuke. For my champions not dead. Kwa sababu shujaa wangu hajafa. He is alive. Yeye yuko hai. And he already knows. Na tayari anajua my every need. Mahitaji yangu yote. Surely he will come and rescue me. Na hakika atakuja na ataniokoa. Let faith arise. Hebu imani yangu inuke. My champion's not dead. He is alive. Kwa sababu shujaa wangu hajafa, yuko hai. And he already knows my every need. Na tayari anajua mahitaji yangu yote. And surely he will come and rescue me. Na hakika atakuja na kuniokoa. It's hard for me to express this to you. Ni ngumu sana kwangu kuielezea hii hali. Time the telephone rang. Wakati fulani simu ikalia. I said, "Dear God, let that be someone with a word of encouragement." Nikasema Mungu wangu, hebu naomba hiyo simu iwe ni mtu mmoja ambaye ananipigia kunitia moyo. And it was Pastor Henry from Uganda. Alikuwa ni mchungaji Henry kutoka Uganda. Pastor Henry from Uganda. Who I met the last time that I was here. And he would call me with prayer. And with words of encouragement. And I am here now giving you a word of encouragement. I am bringing my heart from America to you. Ninauleta moyo wangu kutoka Amerika kukuletea wewe. But at that time you were bringing your hearts to me. Lakini wakati huo ilikuwa ni mioyo yenu mlikuwa mnaileta kwangu. It was the body of Christ in operation. Na ilikuwa ni mwili wa Kristo katika ushirikiano. And I was completely aware of it. Na kweli nilikuwa kwa hakika na usikia. I thought how amazing God that you were using my brothers on the other side of the world to minister to me right now. Na nikashangaa jinsi ambavyo Mungu anatumia ndugu zangu kutoka ngambo ya pili kunihudumia. Pastor Henry called me and he ministered to me. Na mchungaji Henry akanipigia na akaanza kuniombea. One day Festo was sitting there with me at my house. Wakati mwingine Festo akawa tumekaa pamoja kwenye nyumba yangu. It was late. Ilikuwa ni muda umeenda. But it was 5 a.m. in Uganda. Early. It was early in Uganda. Pastor Henry called. He said the Holy Spirit woke me up. And I have a word for you. And Pastor Festo, we agreed with that word and we prayed. And I continued in the battle. Months later, many months later, the Lord brought me out. And after I came out of that terrible place, the Lord gave me riches in my heart that I couldn't get any other way. We had a minister who told us uh, uh, a missionary who told us kuna missionary ambaye aliwahi kutuambia God can't give you these things as a gift Mungu anaweza kukupa hiki kitu kama zawadi He has to rub them into your life lazima akipake kwenye maisha yako kabisa hard rubbing sometimes akisugulie kabisa kwenye maisha yako He's plowing your heart anachimbua moyo wako and as he is doing that, Na hivyo, he's bringing you closer to him. Karibu na yeye zaidi. And he's working to form Christ in you. Na ni ndani yako. You say, but I'm already saved. Unasema, Mbona yes, you are already saved. Ni if kweli, you are. Ni kweli 
But you are being sanctified day by day. Lakini tunaendelea kutakaswa siku hadi siku to grow more and more into the image of Christ. Ili kukua zaidi na zaidi katika ule umbo la Kristo. I came out of that place that I was in for katoka kwenye hiyo hali niliyokuwa and I saw the riches that God gave me while I was in there. Na nikaona utajiri ambao Mungu alinipa wakati nilipokuwa kwenye hiyo hali. So the Philistines had a champion. Kwa hiyo huyu Mfilisti alikuwa ni shujaa. His name was Goliath. Na shujaa wa Wafilisti huyo jina lake ni Goliath. But we have a champion. Sisi tunaye shujaa. His name is Jesus. Jina lake ni Yesu. He is alive. Yeye yuko hai. He is not dead. Yeye hajafa. He was there in the beginning. Yeye yeye alikuepo tangu mwanzo. All things were made by him. Na mambo yote yalitokea kupitia yeye. And nothing that was made was made without him. Na hakuna chochote kile kilichofanyika pasipo yeye. Paul says, I want to know him. Paulo anasema nataka nimjue zaidi. Found in him. Nataka niingie ndani yake zaidi. Not having a righteousness of my own. Ni siwe na ile haki yangu mimi but a righteousness that comes from outside of me lakini haki itokayo nje yangu it is alien to me it is foreign hiyo haki ni ngeni kwangu it's not my righteousness sio haki yangu mimi it comes by faith hiyo inapatikana kwa imani it comes by grace inakuja kwa neema god is showing me that more and more all the time na Mungu amenionyesha hiyo zaidi na zaidi kila wakati. My righteousness is as filthy rags. Haki yangu mimi ni kama matambara yaliyochaka. But the righteousness of God. Lakini haki ya Mungu. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. Haki ya Yesu Kristo. There are no words to express that. Sina hata maneno ya kuweza kuifafanua. Paul says I don't want my own righteousness i want a righteousness that is in him maana paulo akasema mimi sitaki haki yangu mimi ila naitaka haki itokayo kwake what unites me to you what ties me to you kile kinachoniunganisha ama nikunifungamanisha mimi na wewe is that you too have that righteousness that did not come from you ni kwa sababu wewe unayo haki ambayo pia haitokani na wewe We all get this righteousness from Jesus Christ. Sote tunapata hii haki kutoka kwa Yesu Kristo. Which brings us into community with one another. Ambayo inatuleta katika jamii. We therefore become the body of Christ. Sote tumefanyika mkuu mwili wa Kristo. When we come together like this, we recognize we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Tunapokuja pamoja namna hii tunatambua kwamba kila mmoja sisi ni dada na ndugu katika Kristo. And as a dear brother in my church often says, I've read the end of the book and we win. Kuna ndugu I've read the end of the book. I've read Revelation and we win. Kwa hiyo ndugu anasema nimesoma mpaka mwisho wa kitabu lakini nimegundua tunashinda. We win. Tunashinda. And as we look ahead, tunapoangalia mbele like in Daniel chapter 7 where it says I looked and thrones were set. Katika huo mwisho wa sura ya 17 tunaona kwamba ni katazama nikaona enzi zimewekwa. And the ancient of days came Uh, and he took his seat. Okay, na yule mzee wa siku akaja. And then one like the son of man came on the clouds. Mwingine kama mwana wa mwanadamu akaja. And there is the antichrist speaking evil things. Na hapo kulikuwa na huyo mpinga Kristo akiongea mambo ya kutukana. He is trying to overcome the saints of the most high. Akijaribu kuwashinda watakatifu wa yule Mungu aliye juu. He is seeking to wear out the saints of the most high. 
anatafuta namna ya kuwashinda ama kuwadhoofisha watakatifu wa Mungu mkuu. And it says that he would change the times and the seasons. Nakasema watabadilisha nyakati na majira. We see this happening in the world today. Na tunaona haya yakifanyika katika dunia leo. In the United States people are calling good evil. Katika kule America watu wanaita uovu kwamba ni uzuri. And they're calling evil good. Na uzuri wanauita ubaya. And if you are righteous, na kama wewe ni mwenye haki, they don't want to hear it. Hawataki kukusikia. They want to silence your voice. Wanataka wanyamazishe sauti yako. But Daniel says I looked and the saints prevail. Lakini Daniel anasema nikatazama na watakatifu wakashinda. And the kingdom was given to the saints. Na ufalme ukapewa watakatifu. And the saints shall possess it. Na watakatifu lazima watauteka. Do you know that even now in the work? Je, unajua hata sasa katika kazi? We can possess the kingdom. Tunaweza kuumiliki ule ufalme. We are possessing the kingdom. Tunamiliki ule ufalme through this partnership with the Holy Spirit. Kupitia huu shirika na Roho Mtakatifu. When I come to Africa, my heart is full. Napokuja Afrika moyo wangu umejaa because my identity is found in Christ. Kwa sababu utambulisho wangu unapatikana ndani ya Kristo. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Mimi ni balozi wa Yesu Kristo. Given the ministry of reconciliation. Naileta huduma ya upatanisho. Whether we are a pastor or a teacher or an apostle or evangelist. Iwe ni mchungaji ama ni mtume ama ni mwalimu ama ni mwinjilisti. We are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Sisi ni mabalozi wa Yesu Kristo. The ambassador goes forth with the resources of the kingdom that he represents. Balozi huenda kufanya kazi akiwa na rasilimali za ule ufalme ama utawala anaouwakilisha. So Paul writes therefore we do not lose heart. Kwa hiyo Paulo anaandika kwamba tusipoteze tumaini letu. Having nothing we possess all things. Hata kama tukionekana hatuna kitu lakini tunamiliki vitu vyote. I want this to really get into your heart and spirit this afternoon. Natamani hii ingie katika moyo wako jioni hii ya leo. Your identity is you are an ambassador of Christ. Utambulisho wako ni balozi wa Kristo. Given the ministry of reconciliation. Uliepewa huduma ya upatanisho. Let's turn for a moment to Acts chapter 26. Hebu twende kwa muda kidogo katika matendo ya mitume sura ya 10. In Acts chapter 26, Paul the apostle is giving his defense before King Agrippa. Katika matendo sura ya 26, mtume Paulo anajitetea kwa mbele ya mfalme Agrippa. Verse 15. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Nami, nikasema, Weo unani buwana? Buwana kanembia ni mimi yesu ambaye, Weo unani uthi. But rise, Paul, and stand upon your feet. For I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you have seen, and of those things in which i will appear unto you kini inuka usimame kwa miguu yako maana nimekutokea kwa sababu hii nikuweke wewe kuwa uwe mtumishi na shahidi wa mambo haya ulioyaona na wa mambo ambayo katika hayo nitajidhihirisha kwako delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send you kuokoa na watu wako na watu wa mataifa ambao na kutuma kwao Why is Jesus sending Paul? Kwa nini Yesu anamtuma Paulo? What is this ministry of reconciliation? Ni huduma gani hii huduma ya upatanisho? 
Paul tells us right here, let us get this into our hearts. Paulo anasema na hii ningetamani iwe kwenye mioyo yetu to open their eyes. Kufungua macho. Are living in darkness everywhere. We need to pray that God opens their eyes. Watu wanaishi katika giza duniani kote. Tunapasa kuomba ili hao watu wafunguliwe macho. The servant says to Elisha, Oh my Lord, what shall we do? There are so many of the enemy on the hillsides. Yule mtumishi akamwambia Elisha, Bwana wangu tufanye nini maana majeshi wametuzunguka? And Elisha said to him, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Elisha akaomba, E Bwana mfungue macho yake ili aweze kuona. That those are for us are more than those that are against us. Wale walio upande wetu ni wengi kuliko wale walio upande wake. So this ministry is to open their eyes. Kwa hiyo huduma hii ni kwa ajili ya kufungua macho yetu and to turn them from darkness to light. Na kugeuza mioyo yao kutoka katika uovu kurudi ama giza kurudi katika nuru. And from the power of Satan to God. Na kutoka kwenye kwa nguvu za shetani warudi kwa Mungu. And here's the reconciliation. Na huu ndio upatanisho. That they might receive forgiveness of sins. Kwamba ili waweze kupokea msamaha wa dhambi. And an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith in Christ Jesus. Na urithi wa kwamba watatakaswa waweze kuwa wa ufalme wa Yesu Kristo. Have your eyes been opened? Je, macho yako yamefunguliwa? Have you turned in salvation from darkness to light? Je, umegeukia uokovu ukatoka katika ule ufalme wa giza? Have you received forgiveness of sins? Je, umepokea msamaha wa dhambi? Have you been given an inheritance and a place? Je, umepewa urithi wa kuwa umehamishwa? Among them who are sanctified. Na hata kwamba umetakaswa in Christ Jesus. Katika Yesu Kristo. This is the ministry of reconciliation. Hii ndio huduma ya upatanisho. As Bishop Matua shows me the vision for everything that will happen in this center. Kama ambavyo Askofu Mtua alituonyesha jinsi kile kitakachokuwa kinajengwa ama ili jengo litakavyokuwa. This center will proclaim the good news of Christ. Hili jengo litatangaza habari njema za Yesu Kristo. This center will be a light in the darkness. Hili jengo litakuwa ni nuru katika giza. This center will push back the darkness. Hili ehema ama hekalu litasukuma giza mbali na nuru iweze kuepo. This center will restore broken people. Hapa ni mahali ambapo patarudisha watu waliovunjika mioyo na kujeruhiwa. And so many other things as it restores the testimony of Christ na mambo in Nairobi. Mengi, na mambo mengi kadiri litakavyoendelea kushuhudia ushuhuda wa Kristo katika ile eneo la Nairobi. In Saukimao. Na hata isiyo Kimao. So we are ambassadors of Christ. Kwa hiyo sisi ni mabalozi wa Kristo. Given this ministry of reconciliation. Ambao tumepewa huduma ya upatanisho. When I travel I constantly Keep in mind I am an ambassador of Christ. Kwa ninaposafiri nimeweka kwenye moyo wangu kwamba mimi ni balozi wa Yesu Kristo. Because I am an ambassador of Christ whatever comes my way. Kwa sababu mimi ni balozi wa Kristo chochote kitakachotokea njia ni mbele yangu has to cross his desk first. Ni Lazima kipitie kwake kwanza ndio kinifikie. I have access to all of the resources I need. Na ruhusa ya kuweza kupata chochote ambacho ninahitaji. My pastor recently said, mchungaji wangu huwa anasema, this is how he defined prosperity. Anafafanua mafanikio hivi, having enough to do the will of God. Uwe na kinachotosha kwa ajili ya kuyafanya mapenzi ya Mungu. That is the prosperity gospel right there. Hiyo ndio injili ya mafanikio. Having enough Uwe na to ya do kutosha the will of God. Kufanya kazi ya Mungu. So that when we move on to the cloud of witnesses. Kwa hiyo tunapokwenda kwenye wingu la mashahidi. I don't want a gold mansion. 
I don't want gold shoes. I don't want a crown. I want to be with Jesus. And I want to be with the brothers and sisters of the faith. Every tribe, every nation, every people, every tongue that he has rescued from the kingdom of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son. Now I'm going to close back with Dawudi. Let's go Napofunga na hii hadithi ya Daudi Back in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 Tunarudi katika ile Samueli sura ya 17 We back up to 43 Twende kwa katika mstari wa 43 Goliath said to Daudi Am I a dog that you would come at me with staves Goliath anamuuliza Daudi Je, mimi ni mbwa hata umenijia na fimbo? Goliath was offended. Philisti akamlaani. And the Philistine said to David, "Come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field." Philisti akamwambia Daudi, "Njoo huku kwangu, nyama yako nitawapa ndege wa angani na wanyama wa mwituni." Then David said to the Philistine, "You come at me with a sword and a spear and a shield." but i come to you in the name of the lord of hosts ndipo daudi akamwambia yule mfilisti wewe umenijia unanijia mimi na upanga na fumo na mkuki bali mimi ninakujia wewe kwa jina la bwana wa majeshi lord saba oath the lord of hosts huyo bwana wa majeshi ni bwana sabaoti the god of the armies of israel mungu wa majeshi ya israel whom you have defiled. Ambaye umemtukana ama uliwatukana. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. Siku hii ya leo Bwana atakutia mkononi mwangu. How did David know that? Je, Daudi alijuaje hiyo? He raised his Ebenezers. Yeye alimuinua Ebenezer. The Lord has helped me in the past. Mungu aliyenisaidia siku zilizopita atanisaidia leo. Because you have defied the God of Israel. Kwa sababu wewe umeamua kupambana na Mungu wa Israel. You have defied Yahweh. You have defied the great I am. Sasa unapambana na yule mkuu niko ambaye niko. And I will smite you. Sasa nitakuchinja. And I will take your head from you. Na nitakuondoa kichwa chako. And I've heard that David dragged Goliath's head all the way to Golgotha. The skull of Goliath. He dragged it all the way to Golgotha. And I will give you the car it's not in there pastor. Okay. I will give you the carcasses give the carcasses no. the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth that all of the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Na, na nitawapa wanyama ndege wa angani na wanyama wa nji mizoga ya majeshi ya wafilisti. All of this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with a sword and a spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give it into our hands. Ili dunia nzima wajue ya kuwa Mungu na jamii yote wajue ya kwamba Bwana haokoi kwa upanga wala kwa mkuki. Daudi is serving as an ambassador of Christ. David anafanya kazi tu kama balozi wa Kristo even though Christ hasn't been revealed yet. Yeah, he hasn't. Na ingawa hata Kristo bado hajadhihirishwa. David is serving as an ambassador of Yahweh. Ila Daudi anafanya kazi kama balozi wa Yahweh. He recognizes that he will win the battle because the battle is the Lord's. Anatambua kwamba atashinda vita kwa sababu vita ni vya Bwana. He is defending the honor of God. Yeye anailinda heshima ya Bwana. In a partnership with God. Ule ushirika kati yake na Bwana. And all of the glory 
will go to God. Na utukufu wote utamrudia Bwana. We are created in the image of God. Tumeumbwa kwa mfano wa Mungu. We are therefore image bearers. We Sisi bear tuko the pale image of God. Kama wabeba nguvu tu za Mungu. As we go forth and do the work of an ambassador. Kama tunapojua na kuendelea kuifanya kazi ya ubalozi, we reflect more and more the image of Christ. Tutaendelea kufanana zaidi na zaidi na Kristo so that the glory goes to God. Na wakati huo acha utukufu basi umrudie Mungu. We celebrate what the Lord has done. Tunasherekea kile Bwana alichofanya. He has brought you this far by his grace. Ametufikisha umbali huu kwa neema yake. You have an Ebenezer here today. Unaye Ebenezer leo. And you will continue to write this Ebenezer. Na utaendelea kumuinua Ebenezer. You raise them up. Utaendelea kumuinua. By your help I've come Lord. Kwa maana msaada wako umekuja. And as you continue to walk in the battle. Na unapoendelea kufanya kazi na huku ukipigana vita. And fight in the battle. Na kupigana vita for his glory and his purposes kwa utukufu wake na kwa makusudi yake he will win the victory yeye atakushindia amen amen i bless you mungu akubariki thank you my brother